This video is brought to you by Sailrite. In this video, we'll be showing you how to make your own chair pad cushions. This is an easy beginner's project, only requiring patterning, cutting foam, and sewing. Pick from hundreds of home decor fabrics at sailrite.com and build a set of chair pad cushions for your abode. Angela from the Sailrite Sewing Loft is going to show us how it's done. A full materials list and the tools we used can be found at the end of this video. Start by using pattern material. We're using Duraskrim pattern material and we need to cut it to the general size of the chair's seat, slightly oversized. Since the cushion pad will tie to the seat's back rest, the pattern material should be flush up against the back rest, as shown here. The finished cushion will be slightly smaller than the pattern material, as the cushion cover will compress the foam for a good fit. Now simply cut the pattern material with scissors right on top of the lines you struck down. For our cushion foam, we're going to use Fairfield Polyfill New Foam, which is a compressed or densified polyester. However, you can pick to use an antimicrobial polyurethane foam shown on the left. The polyurethane foam is slightly more dense than the new foam. After picking your foam, trace around it using the pattern material you made earlier. The new foam can be cut with scissors. A foam cutter will not work on it. Often you will have to cut a thin layer at a time. We are using a 2 inch thickness of foam, so we are cutting the top half of the foam with scissors. And we will need to go back to cut the bottom half after this is done. If you pick a polyurethane foam, you can use a foam cutter or electric kitchen knife to cut it easily. This tutorial requires a 2 inch foam to be used. Anything thicker and the cushion cover will not fit following these principles. Now we need to cut a top plate and a bottom plate using our pattern onto the home decor fabric we picked from Sayerite.com. We will trace around the pattern placed on top of the fabric, but we will add about a quarter inch for seam allowance. So as you can see we are tracing that distance around the pattern material. Sayerite suggests using a hot knife to cut most synthetic fabrics. This keeps the edges from unraveling as the knife seals the edges. You can sometimes use a wood burning tool or a soldering iron also. We are using the Sayerite Edge Hot Knife Package. It heats up in a few seconds and cools down in about a minute. It is a great professional hot knife at an affordable price for any do-it-yourselfer. You can also use scissors, but expect a little unraveling of the fabric as you sew the assembly together. Angela will use this plate and line up any patterns in the fabric. She will trace around it, making a second plate of equal size. Then cut the second plate out. Now we have two plates, one for the top of the cushion and one for the bottom. We will now install a decorative piping to one of the plates. Find the back side in the center location. Line up the decorative piping so you have a one inch tail going past the center location on the back side of the plate. The tape width of this decorative piping, available at sayright.com, is a half inch and we accommodated for a quarter inch seam allowance. So we will sew the piping on the underside of the fabric so we can see the edge of the fabric plate and position it about a quarter inch away from the piping's tape edge. Start sewing at the center back location, leaving about one inch of piping unsewn and hanging past the center location. Do some reversing to lock the stitch in place. We are using the Sayerite Ultrafeed LS1 sewing machine, which has a large enough cording tunnel built into the standard foot to accommodate this quarter inch piping or cording. If you are using the Ultrafeed LSZ1 sewing machine, which is a blue machine, you will need to use the larger welting or cording foot sold separately at Sayerite.com. Or you could simply use a roping zipper foot and sew right next to the piping with it. Notice that Angela is carefully keeping the fabric about a quarter inch away from the piping's tape edge as she sews. The cording or piping is being fed into the tunnel of the standard foot on the Ultrafeed LS1 sewing machine. We are approaching the back edge center location and Angela will cross over the opposite end of the piping and sew right over it. This gives a neat finished look to the two ends of the decorative piping. Let's take a close-up look at that location 
to see what it looks like. Trim off the excess piping with scissors. Join this plate up with the second plate so the outside surfaces are facing each other. Be sure corners are matched up before sewing. Start sewing at the back corner. You must leave the back side open for the insertion of the foam and also for the insertion of the fabric ties which will be completed in the next step. Sew around this just as you did when you sewed the first plate. The piping is running through the cording tunnel. The fabric is about a quarter inch from the tape's edge. Upon reaching the corner of the back edge, where the foam will be inserted into the cover, stop sewing about an inch past the turn and do some reversing. This is where the fabric ties will be inserted in the next step. We first need to make those ties. That's coming up next. To make the fabric ties, we will cut two strips of fabric that are about 16 inches long and 2 inches wide. We are using the same fabric that the cushion cover was made from. We will cut it out with the Sayerite Edge Hot Knife to help prevent the unraveling of the edges. You could use scissors since all the edges will be hidden. Notice that we typically use a metal ruler on the underside when using the hot knife to prevent damage to the table below. You could also cut on top of glass. A helpful item in most canvas and upholstery applications is the use of double sided tape or seam stick. This is a seam stick for canvas, part number 129. It helps hold seams, hems, and sleeves together so you can take assemblies to the sewing machine and sew them without worrying about it moving. You could also use straight pins. Angela first created a small hem on the ends of the ties, and then she will make a hem on the two long edges, basting them in place. Now fold the tie in half so the hems are on the inside of the fold. Then sew a straight stitch down the length of the tie. Fold the length of the tie in half. This makes a length of about 8 inches for the ties. Insert the tie inside the cushion cover. The cushion cover is wrong side out still. It should be positioned at each corner with the legs of the tie going inside the cover and the folded edge even with the edge of the cover fabric. Then sew it in place, reversing a few times to secure it well. Do not sew the back side of the cover closed yet. Do that to both of the fabric ties. Turn the cover right side out and get ready for the insertion of the foam or compressed polyester coming up next. We are using the new foam which is a compressed or densified polyester. The technique for using the polyurethane foam is the same. Fold up the foam making it easier to insert in the cover and push it inside the cover. It will often look like the foam is too large to fit, but with a little effort it should fit well. We want the cover to be slightly smaller than the foam for a good tight fit and for the best appearance. We're showing this in double time. Notice how Angela uses her hand inside the cover and then pulls the outside edges so the piping is centered. She has to push the foam into the sides and corners of the cover for a good fit. Once the opening in back is sewn up, you will not easily be able to move the cover or foam around. So spend enough time here making sure you get the proper appearance now before you sew the open end shut. 
try to position the piping so it rests in the middle of the cushion. Once you're happy, we will close up the back of the cushion completing our project. The plate that does not have the piping sewn onto it should have its open edge folded back about a quarter inch or so. Then take it to the sewing machine and sew the opening closed. Watch Angela as she completes this task. We are using the standard foot on the sewing machine to sew this opening close. However, if you want the stitch to be closer to the piping, you may want to insert a roping zipper foot on the sewing machine. See how she creates a nice hem to the fabric's raw edge? This gives a finished look to our cushion. The Sayerite Alterfeed LS1 sewing machine walks easily over the decorative piping, even at the middle crossover position. It is truly a great sewing machine for upholstery applications like this and much more. Just tie the cushion to the chair and we are done. Coming up next is the materials lists and tools that we use to make this chair cushion pad. You will find hundreds of gorgeous decorative home decor fabrics at Sailrite to complement your chair's surroundings. For more free videos like this, be sure to check out the Sailrite website or subscribe to the Sailrite YouTube channel. It's your loyal patronage to Sailrite that makes these free videos available. Thanks for your loyal support. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Sailrite, thanks for watching.